On this episode of the All American Legacy podcast, we will discuss being a jump master. A jump master is not a duty, it's a way of life. The origin of the parachutist badge. 350 of the parachutist badges were procured from the Bailey, Banks, and Biddle Company in Philadelphia and were in the hands of the commanding officer of the 501st Parachute Battalion by March 14, 1941. And the importance of one little acronym, LGOP, to the Airborne Legacy. This is the 82nd Airborne Division, fearless among fighting units. From Fort Bragg, home of the Airborne and the center of the military universe, this is the All-American Legacy Podcast. No! An inside look at the 100-year history of the 82nd. They are all American all the way. Something like this. Like this. This is Joe Buccino from the All American Legacy Podcast. Welcome back. This episode is called Little Groups of Paratroopers. Little Groups of Paratroopers, LGOPS for short, is one of the ways in which the 82nd Airborne Division is organized to fight in small, decentralized groups that can use initiative and operate without much guidance. We talked about the LGOPS concept back in episode 10 when we discussed the operation in Sicily. General Gavin wanted his men to identify fellow paratroopers, link up, and then move on to the fight without a commander standing over the top of them giving them orders. That's the way the division was organized to fight in World War II. This way, if paratroopers get scattered like they did in Sicily, or land in the wrong drop zone like they did in Salerno, they can still make their way to the fight. But LGOPS is also the way we think. It's a philosophy. It's the way we relate to one another. We operate as a family of all-American paratroopers. We always say that once you wear the AA patch, you are an all-American paratrooper for life. That means that we always look out for one another. We identify our fellow all-American paratroopers and we cherish our culture. It's interesting that the day after this past Christmas, I was in Douglasville, Georgia, at my mother-in-law's house, and I visited a Gold's Gym. I saw an 82nd Airborne Division bumper sticker on a parked car in the parking lot. It was kind of an odd sight, more than 350 miles from Fort Bragg, in the parking lot of a gym in Douglasville, just outside Atlanta. While I was leaving, I saw the owner of the vehicle leaving the gym and getting in his car. I stopped him and told him I was an all-American paratrooper. It turns out he was a first sergeant in our first brigade in the 1990s. So we struck up a conversation. At the time of that conversation, we were a few weeks away from launching this podcast. I told him about the podcast, and we've kept in touch ever since. He listens and sends me notes. And that, to me, is the spirit of little groups of paratroopers. Wherever we are, wherever we are in the country, wherever we are in the world, we link up, identify one another, and then move on to the objective. In this episode, we talk about a few different subjects that are important to the culture of the 82nd Airborne Division. We talk about the parachutist badge, the importance of our jump masters, and of course, we talk a little airborne history. The connective tissue between all of these different ideas is little groups of paratroopers. The groups of us that maintain these ties and that maintain the culture, I call it our band of brothers. All of these things, everything we talk about on this show, is connected by the broader philosophy of LGOPS, which is a guiding principle in the 82nd Airborne Division. We care for one another, we love one another, we pay heed to our history, we take pride in our culture. Now here is Specialist Laren Wynn to talk about an important figure in 82nd culture, the Army Jumpmaster. All right, hey, I'm Staff Sergeant Will Rainier. I'm going to be your AJ on the second pass on the right door. This is Sarge Jet. It's a little different, 
but stay with us, all right? Sergeant, static line That voice giving commands is the same staff Ready sergeant, Will Rainier, who sometimes hosts the All-American Legacy podcast. This audio of Sergeant Rainier was recorded late last year while he was performing duties as the assistant jump master during a training airborne operation with the 82nd Airborne Division on Fort Bragg in North Carolina. Basically, you heard him preparing 55 paratroopers to jump out of an aircraft while in flight. The instructions Sergeant Rainier is giving are a part of sustained airborne training. Sustained airborne training happens before all airborne operations, while on the ground, before the paratroopers even get on the aircraft. It's a rehearsal of sorts. A rehearsal of what's going to happen and what to do if something goes wrong. It's serious stuff. He's describing the actions that are to take place inside the aircraft, while in the air, and as the paratroopers exit the aircraft. Staff Sergeant Rainier is an Army Jump Master. So, you may ask, what is an Army Jump Master? What does a Jump Master do? Jump Master is important because you should be the subject matter expert in your craft when you're talking about jump out of airplanes. That's Command Sergeant Major Alexander Barnett. Up until recently, he was the Command Sergeant Major of our 1st Brigade. He's now moving on to another brigade combat team in Washington State. He spoke with our Lieutenant Colonel Joe Buccino about the importance of the jump master in the division and in the airborne culture as a whole. Jump master is not a duty. It's a way of life. Um, you're always, you know, thinking how you can become a better jump master, even from the time you graduated. You know, like myself, I went to jump master school in 1995, and here I am still being a jump master, current and qualified jump master, every day trying to figure out how can I be a better jump master. Um, and I've been doing it for 25 years. It's a lot of responsibility. Very lot of responsibility. All the lives on the aircraft. What is that? What is all that? How does that weigh on you? It's very stressful. Um, but there, but there's some perks to being a jump master in, in the 82nd Board Division. Um, if you're a sergeant and you're a jump master and you have a higher ranking folks on your aircraft, you outrank those folks on the aircraft <laughs> because you are responsible for everyone on the aircraft. So, you know, at the end of the day, you want to be the guy or gal leading your soldiers out of the door by being their jump master, being responsible for you, the folks that you're in charge of. How many jumps do you have, sir, Major? I have well over 100 jumps, sir. So, over 100, have you ever been hurt? Have you been injured on a jump? Well, that's, that's defined injured. <laughs> um, you know, uh, th- th- there's a saying, you know, you, whether you're hurt or you're injured. Injured means like, hey, I cannot carry on as my duties as on the drop zone. So, no, I've never been injured, but I've been hurt every time I jump. Mm. Uh, <laughs> What's, okay, what's the worst you've been hurt? I probably banged my head. Mm. Um, and where I was, you know, maybe a little dizzy, but n- nothing, no bones or no, mm-hmm. no, nothing like that, sir. What would you tell a soldier who's thinking about becoming a paratrooper in the 82nd Airborne Division? First of all, I would tell a soldier that this is a serious business. Um, we're talking about America's Guard of Honor, being a paratrooper. It's, it's different than being a soldier. Um, you're taking on a, a different title. You're you pick up a special skill. Uh, and, and you have to be in good shape, and you have to take it seriously. But I always tell them, hey, just talk to some people about, hey, what, what does it mean to be a paratrooper? That's their age group. Because you're, you're asking me to talk to a, a young soldier, a, a young person that's you know 18 years old about being a paratrooper. They're going to say, well, you've been doing it for 25 years, so you, you already bought in. I, I think when you see the amount of folks that re-enlist, that stay in the 82nd Airborne Division, it's a testimony within itself to say, hey, I want to be a paratrooper for life. Mm. So I would ask that, I would tell them to go talk to someone in their peer group that's, that's been in 82nd for a couple of years. And the last thing I would tell them is, it's a family culture. What makes us different is, we all have airborne wings. We all think alike. We all run alike. We all look alike. You can tell the difference between a paratrooper and a non-paratrooper. You can tell the difference between a soldier in the 82nd and a soldier in 10th Mountain. You can tell the difference between a soldier in the 82nd and a soldier, uh, uh, an airman or, 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 or a sailor. So you become a family, regardless of the rank, because we all are paratroopers. Mm-hmm. In the division, last question here, Sir Major. In the division, you know, we have a lot of the symbols of, of our culture, the Maroon Beret, jump boots. Everybody seems to know the double A patch. Everybody in the country seems to know the double A patch. Why are all those symbols important? Those symbols are important. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to try to make it 
so we could understand. It's like like a football team. Why does the Dallas Cowboys have stars on their helmets? You know, hmm. you know. Why does the Patriot has you know a Patriot on the helmet? You know what? It, it, it symbolizes who you are, what you do, and what you bring to the fight. And also, you can recognize your peer group. You say, hey, that's a paratrooper over there with a beret on, and you are by yourself. You can link up and become little L gops. And once you get closer to each other, you see, hey, you're in the eighty second. <laughs> oh, you're the airborne. Oh, you're jump master. Hey, when are you gonna get your mastery? You know, those things are they're conversational pieces. Yeah. But they're also, you know, a brand of honor. Right. LGOPs being little groups of paratroopers. Little groups of paratroopers. Okay. Exactly. <laughs> Not every person is going to know what that means. <laughs> what is little groups of paratroopers? Little groups of paratroopers, you know, it started out um, a long time ago when I was a young paratrooper back in the 90s. I was in 1st Brigade 3504, and um, it, was, it was a drop zone thing. You know, hey, I want you, regardless of what unit you're in, what company or platoon you're in, just get together with a couple of paratroopers, little groups of paratroopers, and you go fight and win. And then now it's transferred to almost in civilian light because now we're just LGOPs everywhere, whether it be at the mall, whether it be at a football game, whether it be, you know, some of the kids, they, they get together and go out, you know, have fun at the, at the bars and little groups of paratroopers. It's, it's a group of paratroopers, regardless of what situation you find yourself in, you're going to take care of each other. On the drop zone, combat, downtown, wherever. So that was Command Sergeant Major Barnett. I think he made it pretty clear that the Jumpmaster has an important duty and holds an important role in the airborne culture. So now let's take a look at the history of the Army Jumpmaster and of the Parachutist Badge. The Parachutist Badge, or as we like to call them, Jump Wings, is awarded to an airborne qualified soldier who has graduated from airborne school. It's the Army's oldest special skill badge, and it was formally approved on March 10, 1941. Initially, it was also awarded to soldiers who never actually went to airborne school, but participated in at least one combat parachute jump in World War II. You've seen the jump wings. It's a silver parachute with wings on each side. The design of the badge goes back to 1941. Major William Miley, an early pioneer of airborne warfare who would go on to serve as an Army Major General, served as the very first commander of the Army's very first combat airborne unit, none other than the 501st Parachute Battalion. In 1941, Major Miley ordered one of his officers, Major William P. Yarborough, to design a parachutist badge to recognize the soldiers who had completed airborne jump training. Yarborough, by the way, would go on to achieve the rank of Lieutenant General, becoming an important figure in airborne history. In March 1941, Yarborough created the design we know and love today, and it was approved by the War Department. Here's a memorandum of record written by Yarborough on April 22, 1941. I drew the original sketch in the office of the G3. A finished copy of my original sketch was prepared in the office of the Quartermaster General. 350 of the parachutist badges were procured from the Bailey, Banks, and Biddle Company in Philadelphia and were in the hands of the commanding officer of the 501st Parachute Battalion by March 14, 1941. This is believed to have been an all-time speed record for War Department procurement. I personally took the correspondence relative to the badge's approval from one office to another until the transaction was complete. This operation took me one entire week, eight hours a day. Since then, the original design of the badge hasn't changed once. Earning jump wings remains a significant personal achievement. The fact that the exact badge first presented in 1941 to the original American paratroopers is also presented to today's paratroopers testifies to the enduring contributions of the airborne and the importance of history and tradition of the airborne culture. But much has changed. You see, during World War II, the jumpmaster, usually an officer, would be the first paratrooper out of the door. When the 505th Parachute Infantry Regiment jumped into Salerno in September 1943, the regimental commander, then Colonel Gavin, jumped first. Now, the jumpmaster jumps last. Also during World War II, there was no formal training for jumpmasters. 
The standards for performing Jumpmaster duties were not really established. After the war, many divisions were deactivated. It looked like the 82nd may also deactivate. But in the end, the decision was made to retain the 82nd in the Army. The 82nd was assigned to Fort Bragg, North Carolina in 1946, and the standards for Jumpmasters were refined. Fort Bragg is where the division remains today. In fact, that's where I'm recording this podcast. In 1949, two new badges were developed. The Senior Parachutist Badge has the same jump wings with a star above the parachute. It's awarded to soldiers who complete additional requirements, including making 30 jumps in training, serving 24 months on jump status, and graduating from a jump master course. The Master Parachutist Badge has the star surrounded by a laurel wreath. Sergeant Major Barnett wears the Master Parachutist Badge. This requires 65 jumps, 36 months on jump status, and graduation from a Jumpmaster course. In 1983, the Army approved bronze-colored stars representing participation in combat jumps on the wings. That year, the Army also authorized Golden Star for combat jumps. The first standing operating procedures, the guidelines for all Jumpmasters and all airborne operations, is dated March 10th, 1946. We have it here. It's pretty detailed and specifies all training and safety inspections before and during airborne operations. So, in the 82nd, some things do change, and some things stay the same. But we hold tight to the symbols of our legacy. We hold on to the items that remind us of our past. I am Specialist Lara Nguyen for the All-American Legacy Podcast. Thank you for listening. Where did all the people go? They got scared when the lights went low. That was Specialist Laren Wynn with a report on the Parachutist Badge. Also a great interview there with Command Sergeant Major Alexander Barnett. You can tell he cares deeply about our soldiers. As always, we want to thank Brian Bird for his support to this episode and all of our episodes. And we want to thank all of you. If you're enjoying the podcast, if you listen to the podcast, please leave a rating and leave a review. We continue to expand our audience, and we want to thank all of you for that. We will close this episode with the Gavin de Gras song, Soldier, performed by Corporal Jermaine Terry and the All-American Chorus. Funny when times get tough, get at the last moment when you're supposed to charge. Always on the longest yard. Oh, they feel the feet getting cold. Your feet getting cold. Trying to be still as a stone, no, I'll get it if you need it, I'll search if you don't see it, you're thirsty, I'll be right, you get hurt, I'll take it back, I know you don't believe it, I said it and I still need it, when you heard what I told you, when you get worried, I'll be a soldier, my age, so won't you. I want to show you I'll try forever I'm never going to say surrender Cause I'll get it if you need it I'll search if you don't see it You're thirsty, I'll be right You get hurt, I'll take the I know you don't believe it But I said it and I still mean it When you heard what I told Oh, I'll be a soldier.